Lower face, saggy and wrinkled. Which is the best treatment and should I go abroad? I have developed jowls as my face has dropped. I also have developed lines on my lower face. I have tried fillers, but the area just becomes lumpy. There are many lines which are becoming more prominent. What type of treatment is suitable? I've seen many different things such as jowl lifts, thread lifts, and mini facelifts. Which one gives the best and longest results and better value for money? Is it worth going abroad or too risky as I've heard that it's cheaper? Thanks, Debbie. Thank you for your question. You submitted an isolated, limited photo of an area where you have some lines and you asked a long series of questions about choices regarding different surgical methods and techniques as well as a question about going abroad and, um, and about the best value. So clearly there is a financial issue at play here. So, as a cosmetic oculofacial plastic surgeon practicing for 20 years, facial rejuvenation happens to be an area that I specialize in, and I actually wrote a book a few years ago called The Fine Art of Looking Younger to help people like yourself who are confused about fillers as well as optimal procedures. So, I'm just going to share with you some basic principles that I talk to my patients about when they come to me for a consultation. Let's start with some of the, the simplest ideas. First, what is facial aging? Facial aging is a combination of volume loss. Volume loss means loss of bone, muscle, fat, collagen, basically soft tissue. And so, as we get older, the face gets a little bit smaller, the, the, the baby fat diminishes. Everything gets smaller. And that's why fillers have such a vital role, especially in the earlier decades of facial aging, such as 30s and 40s. Now, in addition, there is laxity and loss of elasticity, where tissues such as the skin and the tissue under the skin, a very important layer called the SMAS, which stands for superficial musculoaponeurotic system, gets loose, it becomes thinner, and it sags. It's like the foundation of the house gets weaker, and then everything else sags. Over the 20 years of practice, I have seen so many procedures come and go that were supposed to be shortcuts. This includes thread lifts, mini weekend lifts, um, various heating devices that are supposed to take over and eliminate facelifts, um, lasers. The basic take-home message there is there are no shortcuts. There are ways that procedures can be done that can optimize the results, but certainly shortcuts never really work. So when you have to make a decision and if money is an issue, from my perspective that's where a lot of people make a lot of mistakes. As a specialist and as someone who has become well known, I have patients who come to me from all over the world and all over the country who have had some unfortunate results by going for a less expensive uh, option. Unfortunately, in the field of cosmetic surgery, there appears to be kind of a, two types of doctors. There are doctors who do high volume and low prices, and then there are doctors who do low volume and higher prices. And then there are people in the middle, and that kind of muddles things a little bit, but quality, unfortunately, does cost. The cost of anesthesia, operating facilities, and the art of doing the surgery cannot be rushed. So unfortunately the old adage is you often do get what you pay for is true. Now trying to meet the need for people who are financially limited, a lot of 
medical tourism has cropped up. Now, I'm not interested in telling you that uniformly it's all bad, but here are the things that we have seen patients experience. People have come back after going to different countries for surgeries where they needed additional aftercare. Surgery is a single procedure, but there are a certain percentage of people that need a little bit more care, whether it's the incision, whether it's for swelling, whether it's for areas that may need treatment with steroids or things like that. It's not like going to taking your car and getting a, uh, a, a headlight changed. So the aftercare process is so important, and they miss that by going to another country, coming back, and then they come to someone like myself or a colleague, and then they're, they're, they're surprised that they've had to deal with all of these issues. Being in the United States, being in, it, 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 going to a doctor who has the qualifications, the experience, and is accessible has tremendous value. I always teach my patients that your procedure is an investment. Think of it as an investment that will pay long-term dividends in terms of the benefit over the many years. Being in practice for 20 years, my patients and I have all got, gotten all together, and we, at one point, maybe I'll do their eyes, another point they'll come back and then I'll do their face, but I'm always available to my patients, and the accessibility and the ease makes it a very a very good journey for, for, for the majority of my patients. So that can't, be, that, that can't be understated. So of course, my bias is to recommend that you meet with several experienced cosmetic surgeons, come up with a plan. It's always about a plan. Sometimes if, when it comes to budget, you choose the things that you are most concerned about and you address them at a particular time. In our practice, what we do, we do everything under local anesthesia with sedation, which means that if someone can't afford everything, they don't feel bad that they're not going under general anesthesia and having to go back under general anesthesia. We don't do that at all for 99% of our surgeries. And so our patients feel like they can do the sedation, they recover very quickly, and then when the time is right, they'll come back and they'll do another procedure. So anesthesia has been a, certainly a factor in my experience that has helped a lot of our patients budget their priorities. Um, unfortunately, when you're going to go under general anesthesia, there's pressure to do more procedures just because it's not, a, it's not the best experience or, and then in terms of the risks involved as well. So when you come, with a, come together with a plan, an idea of what you need to do, then you may be able to do limited procedures as long as you and the doctor are clear on what the ultimate benefit is. In my experience, shortcut procedures, again, aren't the best way to do things. It, you know, life goes full circle. Most of our procedures, for example, for facial rejuvenation, such as a facelift or a face and neck lift, we do it aggressively enough so that they feel like their, their jawline is tight, their neck angle is well defined, the cheeks are up, and it looks really, really good. When you do shorter cut procedures, sometimes you get a better jawline, but then there's still a little sagging and a little bit of neck laxity, and then you, that's what people focus on. So that's kind of the benefit of uh, experience. So think through your choices. I would discourage you from going abroad. There are many, many highly qualified, experienced cosmetic surgeons, and I think it's a matter of you clicking with the right one and figuring out how to budget, but budget intelligently, don't go for cheap. Uh, you, you, I think that it is never a good idea to go in that direction. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck, and thank you for your question. Mm -hmm.